let the galaxy burn. Hi guys, it's been a while since I made a video, uh, real life's been real busy and my Fabius Bile video that I promised is still in the works but in the meantime I just wanted to make a video showing a couple of uh, fights I've had with a lesser used warlord Valkarian the War Sage. Let's quickly just uh, pop in and take a look at the deck. I'm actually going to show you uh, two decks, one slight variation on the original um, but let's take a look at Malkarian first. So he's got he's from the Night Lords, which means he gets access to a couple of cool troops. His ability over here though is you spend two energy and you can give a unit plus two attack permanently. He has medium initiative, so he tends to go second because the meta has a lot of high initiative warlords in it. And then like all of the um, epic warlords, he's got two attack and 35 health. Alright, now I'm just going to talk through the deck a little bit. First of all, I'll just bring up this screen so you can see what was in the first deck that I worked with. And then I'm just going to go and talk through the cards quickly. The second deck is almost exactly the same thing. Alright, so um, the general theme of the deck, by the way, is going to be trying to take advantage of the fact that he can give a unit really high attack to uh, uh, have synergy with the Night Lord's Terror ability, which means their units don't take damage when attacking units which have a lower attack than them. Alright, so let's take a look at what we have. I'm just going to run through the cards from cheapest to most expensive. First up, Lictisio Divinatus. I've got two of those in here just to help me hunt through my deck and make sure I get the cards that I need. Next is Thandamel Squad. So this guy has some pretty poor stats initially. He's only got one health, but he only does cost one energy. So I'm potentially going to um, be forcing the enemy to waste a higher cost, higher energy unit trying to kill this guy, which should get him off the board and um, available for my guys to... Uh, sorry, well, it should get the enemy units off the board or get the enemy to waste energy. And if not, I've got some other cards which might help Thandamal Squad get pretty deadly. Next is 10th Oath. These guys I'm, are in here mostly for their rally ability. They uh, give an enemy unit minus two attack when you put them on the board, but they also have terror, meaning that when I buff them with uh, Malkarian, they can become quite nasty to face. Next, Ambassador Melgator, the first of the uh, legendaries we're going to see in this deck. He's just solid. He can basically force any, as it says, Astartes infantry to get back off the board, which can clear a threat temporarily. Recon Claw. This is a cool little Night Lord's unit. Um, this card is in here to help my units attack the enemy units in the turn that I play them. Tynot Terror Squad. Honestly, uh, the main reason I have these guys is they're cheap and when I buff them they become a pretty handy unit. So uh, they're in here just to take advantage of Malkarian's ability. Similarly for Condrayer. Condrayer does come with flank built in. But uh, they do have Terror, which means when Malkarian uh, buffs them, they can become pretty nasty to, uh, because I can drop them on the board and use them to instantly kill anything with less than uh, 5 attack. Well, less than uh, 5 attack, assuming I buff them with Malkarian. And um, yeah, 5 or less health. So they become pretty nasty. Legacy of Bises. This is one of the new cards which was added after a recent event. And... This card initially looks kind of messy because it gives both Warlords zero attack, meaning your Warlord will take a pounding and not be able to fight back. But this card is in here because once I waste energy or spend energy buffing my units to give them really high attacks, I do not want them to get damage when they're attacking the enemy Warlord. So this allows me to uh, keep hitting the enemy for longer and as an added bonus it draws a card. Rule of Fear. This is great. It kills any enemies with two or less attack. So I, this is in here basically to kill Jubax and um, Helios Mortar Carriers. Terror Tactics synchronizes really well with Rule of Fear. Gives units, enemy units minus two attack and that also helps Terror to trigger against them. Ka per mode, otherwise known as Caper mode. Uh, this is handy. It basically punishes the enemy for attacking you including when they attack or even when they attack and kill copper mode. It's a good card. Uh, I like it. So it goes in here. 
Endos Shrek is the next of the legendaries in this deck. So he's got stealth, he's got terror, and he gets stronger the more enemies die. He's pretty nasty to face. I've got two knight sides going in here. So um, these guys basically are used to uh, rally. You drop them, they kill uh, low attack enemy units, and they have terror themselves and high attack values, and so they can help you really take board control and keep it there. Reaper of Kaldrak. So this is a pretty uh, solid uh, card in here. And I actually just noticed I've got these the wrong way around. I should have had two Reapers of Kaldrax and one Knight Side. Let me fix, fix that one up in here quickly. There we go. And one Knight Side only. Perfect. So one Knight Side in the deck. Two Reaper of Kaldrax. These are a vehicle. You drop them on the board. They stop an enemy attacking. And they've got um, Terror as well. So uh, they can be buffed with Mal by Malkarian quite nicely and become brutal as well. Curse is chosen. Well, uh, this guy just makes all the enemies on the board weaker. He's really powerful, fantastic legendary. And then in the th for this first match, you're going to see me having two of the Spectre of Judgments, which are in there just to, in theory, uh, destroy any um, any high health or especially nasty enemy units. And then critically in this deck. We had Legacy of Byzas earlier because it gave the enemy Warlord zero attack for one turn. Uriah the Seducer gives the enemy uh, Warlord zero attack as long as Uriah's on the board. So uh, this is there for the same purpose. And lastly, the Raven is the finishing move for uh, the Night Lords. All right, enough of looking at this deck. Let's just review it one final time over here. And then let's get in there and see how this deck did in the first match, which I'm going to show. So in this match, we're facing Conrad Kurz. So my starting hand, I wasn't happy with it. It just didn't seem to have the right units to play in the first turn for me. So I was replacing all of the cards in there. I was looking for a unit with uh, two health, which I can play in the first, sorry, with two energy cost, which I can play in my first turn. And that's what I got. I got the uh, reverse gun here, Time Up Terror Squad coming out. Unfortunately, Conrad, who I was facing, uh, played the exact same unit as well, so he had a Tynoch Terror Squad too. Alright, so uh, what I ended up drawing into my hand was my own Tynoch Terror Squad. Well, I had that originally. I also drew Thandamel Squad, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and play the uh, Tynoch Terror Squad after trying to attack the enemies one myself. So Tynak Terror Squad had this special where anyone who gets damaged by it, whether it's attacking or defending, gets minus two attack this turn. So anyhow, um, I got minus two, that didn't matter, it was during my own turn. And now he decides to try to finish my guy off here. He does have terror, so once he reduced the attack to one, he could attack it without taking any damage in return. So now this was not looking that great for me, but Condrea popped up at the right moment. So with flank built in and terror, he could help me take board control very quickly over here. Came back to his turn with an artillery strike. He hit on Condrea's weakest spot, which is at low health. And damaged me as well, and then went in for the direct attack. So... I started off on 4 less health than him, I'm now on 9 less health, but Legacy of Bizes pops out to buy me a little time, and I can then throw out Thandamel Squad, and because Conrad Curse has no attack this turn, hopefully Thandamel Squad was going to survive. Except, he had a defense satellite, so that popped away. Came back to my turn, so I upped the ante. I can drop Endros Shrek, which is uh, goes into stealth mode and threatens everything he can put on the board almost at this point. There we go, he put his uh, Headsman down. 5 attack, 4 health, and the terror ability. But, 10th Oath had this nice ability where it gives an enemy minus 2 attack. So I can drop 10th Oath, use uh, Endros Shrek to attack, which buffs him, and still have enough energy left over to drop my copper mode. So now, oops, whenever the enemy guy attacks, he would take uh, two points of damage. So he played Nostramo to uh, make sure I cannot attack this turn. 
So in theory, his Jubak should have been safe. But I have Knight Sides, who when you rally, will destroy any unit with two or less attack, like a Jubak. And that made Endos Shrek down there look extra nasty with eight attack now. There we go, his eight attack. So he had his own Spectre of Judgment in hand, which he used to just wipe that out. I'll also kill my 10th Oath beside. And he took this moment to knock out the Copper Mode to uh, help protect him in any future attacks. Alright, this is where the next Reaper of Kaldak came out. So gave him the uh, stopped him from attacking. I buffed my Knight Sides and went in for a full attack over here. Went back over to his turn and he dropped his own Reaper of Kaldak to uh, hit my most threatening unit. And he had a little terror squad going too. So now I did have a Legacy of Visus, but I so I uh, buffed my uh, Dreadnought over there, used that to destroy his Dreadnought without taking any damage because of the uh, terror ability. And then I played Legacy of Visus, which drew me another card, which then also allowed me to uh, finish uh, his little guy off with my Core Drainer squad. So now my enemy is starting to get in a pretty bad position after that turn. I've got more health than him, and he has zero attack. So he went into Madness Mode, which usually is uh, tricky for Conrad Curse, except I had Rhea the Seducer in hand. So with zero attack, he can't kill things anymore to become invisible, because normally, as a Night Hunter, every time he kills a unit, he, uh, as every time he kills a unit, he would normally get a uh, extra uh, stealth mode. So now he drops a bunch of units, including a uh, at but that dies to my buffed. Re uh, what are these things called? Well, good die to my buffed guy. <laughs> And then he starts taking a real beating from down there. Use Lactizio Dominatis to draw a couple more cards, and I get yet another unit which I can play right now. So these guys get down on the board too. Now it's really tough for him. With my little uh, demon out here, Conrad cannot attack. Shh, it's over. Don't fight it. So he can't attack me, no matter what he's putting on the board, he's just not able to kill enough stuff to avoid getting killed himself. There he goes, he tries to take out the demon to restore his attack, obviously it's not enough. And now it's pretty much over. And there, he gets knocked down. So I like that battle, because I, me and him were originally uh, duking it out, he was in 30 something health, I was in 20 something health, and then I just froze him. Like, I, my health did not drop below 23, while he just kept taking more and more and more of a pounding. Alright, that's going to take me on to the second deck, which I was going to show. So, I then later revised the deck a little bit. So, I made a couple of changes, mostly because I wanted to include Nostramo into the deck. So, where that ended up going in was I took out the two Spectre of Judgments I had. So let's uh, quickly uh, grab Spectre of Judgment and take it out of the deck. Come on, Spectre. There we go. And then I added in Nostramo. And then while I was looking at this uh, deck, I decided that I could either add... I could have either kept the second uh, Spectre of Judgment, but I like going for consistency in my decks. And I only had one Night Scythe. So I was going to go and add the second Night Scythe back in. And so now when you look at my deck, it's very similar to before. I just lost the instant kill of the Spectre of Judgment, but I did have an extra Night Scythe. And with Nostramo in my deck, I had an, another card which would allow me to uh, uh, stop enemies from attacking and draw a card for myself. Basically buy me a bit more time. All right. So let's uh, look at this deck list again. In a moment, I'll come back and uh, talk about what to do about these legendaries if you don't have them. But in the meantime, let's go and take a look at the second of these battles. So we're up against Fabius Bile this time around. 
So uh, this time around, I was looking at my starting hand. I was actually kind of okay with it. I've got two legendaries, which will be great, as well as uh, a, t a tenth oath to play in my first turn and Thandamels to follow up with. So I was fine to keep this. So hit done and continue. Ball. Unfortunately, Fabius had the initiative, so he drops a unit, triggers perfection on it to make it extra nasty, and then things start. So I actually went with Thandamil squad in the hope that he would use to waste his unit attacking it, but he didn't quite fall for this plan. Because if his little unit there attacked Thandamil squad, it would have died, but instead he decided to take the hit on Fabius Bile and attack me with the unit. Oh, no, he didn't. Sorry, he uh, decided to keep the unit alive. My memory is getting a bit fuzzy. Jubax obviously really dangerous. Have to take him out. So, uh, use Cordrea and then attacked him directly. Now, I was still hoping his unit would attack my unit and cancel each other out, but he did not fall for that. So first he stuns me with uh, Zephyr's Children little squad guy there, and then he attacks me and finishes my unit with Fabius Bile. By this point I was feeling pretty happy because we were into the third turn and he had not buffed anyone yet. Recon Claw is always important so I uh, put that one down and decided not to waste my other unit because I wanted to wait until I could use uh, the Recon Claw and 10th Oath together. There we go, now the buffing starts. He comes along, he attacks me. He attacks me again. Ouch and flips over to my turn and now the fight back starts. I'm well behind him on health but now I'm feeling good. First of all, Terror Tactics gets out to uh, weaken all of his units. Then Tenth Oath gets deployed. I use the Recon Claw to give him flank so they can attack. And while his guy has zero health, I may as well finish him off. Boom. All right, it goes back to his turn and there we go. So now he brought out a freaking tank. Great. And he gives the tank a uh, <laughs> flank, but then he actually attacks uh, my guy with Fabius Bile instead of the tank. Alright, this is not looking good. That tank has a whopping 7 attack. So let's draw 2 cards and Nostramo comes up. That's perfect. Nostramo gives all the enemy he can't attack. That buys me a little bit of time to come up with a counter move, so I put down my little Tynox squad there. Now this is worrying. Look at that Predator. 8 attack and 6 health and it has Bloodthirsty so it can attack twice. That's going to kill me right then and there in the next turn. But I have an ace up my sleeve. Curse is chosen with the Recon Claw giving it flank. So Curse of Chosen has 7 attack and its ability is all enemy have 2 less uh, attack. Which allows Curse of Chosen to attack that with uh, Terror and not take any damage in return. In fact, look at the attack stats on all of his units. They're pretty pointless right now. But he uh, uses Aslan Squad's ability as well as his Longinus card to unfortunately kill Curse's Chosen right now and get all of his attack stats right back. He buffs his little Recon Claw which gives it a big enough pool of health that he feels comfortable attacking me too. Alright, I figured that Recon Claw was actually looking pretty damn dangerous here. Because it can uh, give all, uh, it can give units flank, so I quickly moved in, took out his uh, Aslan squad first, then used terror tactics to uh, weaken all of his units and started picking away at that recon claw. Came back to his turn. He still has more than twice as much health as me. Draws a nice bunch of cards for himself, but it gives me one too. He throws a buff on the Recon Claw, but it's a weak one this time. If the Recon Claw attacks me, it dies. Nope, look at that, now he's got the uh, speeder bikes coming, as well as a free Nisser Scouts. Speeder bike takes out uh, my Endos Shek. I don't know why he gave that flank, it did nothing. 
Okay, now the fun part begins. Two caper modes. As well as a Thandamel spawn, which I can now use to destroy his uh, buffed high damage unit. With two caper modes out, every time he attacks me, he's going to take a random four points of damage. So I wipe out as many units of his as I can first. And he starts to realize that the uh, caper modes are dangerous, so he's trying to kill them as fast as he can. So that includes killing all the units on the board. <laughs> and he hits that caper mode. He does take four points of damage at this time, which really starts to even the odds in this. There we go, and the final uh, caper mode dies, but it manages to shoot him as well. Now it's getting closer. A couple of seconds ago, he had more than twice as much health than me. Now we're almost equal on health. So now I can drop 10 to O, weaken his little guy over there. Polectosio Divinatus, and conveniently I got Knight Sides, and his guy normally had three attack, but after the tenth oath it only had one attack, and that meant with Knight Sides could kill it instantly. So I was trying to take board control back and get him positioned. In fact, it's pretty much over for him now, because you'll notice I have the Raven in hand. No matter what he does to me now. There we go. It's over. Now turn your skin it. into my clay. Right, so no matter what he does to me now, unless he has a frontline unit, which he didn't, I could hit him with uh, the Reapers and then use the Raven to finish this him off. will make a fine legend. There we go. Let's drop that and kill. So that was a nice little comeback over there. Alright. Now I just wanted to talk a moment about um, if you're trying to build a, car a deck similar to this and you do not have all of these legendaries, because this deck has a whopping, uh, let's count this, one, two, three, four, five, six legendary cards in there. All right, the bad news is um, you're not going to be competitive on Terra without um, all six of these legendary cards that all have a really important role to play. But in case you're lower down in the ladder and you're on like one of the lower planets like um, Kalth, Prospero, maybe even Mars, let's run you through what you can replace some of these with. So Melgator, I normally say that you can replace him with any kind of removal card, usually Seek and Destroy because that's also a two energy card. With three damage, it can kill most units, so um, it can probably take Melgator's place. Nostramo is a trickier one. If we go back, take a look at Nostramo, what it does here is it gives units can't attack and it draws a card. So it has sort of two effects at once. I think you can't really compensate for the can't attack side of it. So maybe what you could do is throw in a knight attack potentially, a curse of foresight, or. Yeah, I think one of those two would probably work best. It's at a similar energy cost, and they'll at least get you... Uh, Night Attack will sort of simulate a little bit of the uh, can't attack effect, because it makes your troops um, immune to direct attack. And Curse of Foresight will sort of fill the role of uh, drawing cards for you as well. So you could go with either one of those instead of Nostramo. They're not great substitutes, but they can sort of play this role. Endos Shrek and Reaper of Kaldrak. These guys are much harder to replace. Sorry, Endos Shrek and uh, Curses Chosen. Because they've got very unique abilities. Curses Chosen gives enemy troops minus two attack and it has terror. Endos Shrek starts in uh, stealth and he gains attack every time an enemy dies. For replacing e both of those, you've got a couple of options. You could go with the fast troops in the deck. So either Tyridol Squad which gets fast if the enemy has no troops, or Night Raptors, who are... F Actually, uh, where's it gone? Sorry, Tenebra Squad. That if you have no troops, they gain fast. The other two options you can use to replace them are either Night Raptors, who get deployed and have stealth, or Seeker Talon, who get deployed, they have stealth, and they regain stealth if they attack the enemy Warlord. Then lastly, rounding off the final two um, uh, legendaries in here, Rhea the Seducer and the Raven. 
Again, those are both really, really important ones, but if you don't have them, again, the role you can fill, sort of fill with them, sort of being high damage cards, can come from any of these at the bottom. So the Vosk Predator, Atramentar, Vakurin. Vakurin is probably the best of those. Or uh, Pargerboat. Vakurin will, syn will uh, synergize best with uh, Malkarian's ability of spending two energy to give plus two attack because Vakurin actually has terror unlike the others so only Vakurin can take, can take advantage of uh, taking no damage when he attacks weaker troops all right I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that little video just to round off again this is what the final deck was and this is what I'll be continuing to play around a bit with Valkarian is not the strongest of the warlords if he did he would be up there on Terra but he certainly pr well he would be up there in popular on high Terra but he certainly looks viable and uh, he's definitely a lot of fun to play and best of all he has that horrible horrible um, chat line about shh just uh it's all over let it happen something like that which just makes you feel evil and sinister when you play that on someone as you're killing them all right so um i'm gonna be hopefully back soon with my fabius bile video at last if you enjoyed this please remember to subscribe and you get notified when fabius bile gets posted all right until then bye for now guys